birds are just like a seed, but you're never quite a flower. You feel more just like a weed. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Galen Lee, and this is another edition of Sunday Sessions with Galen Lee. And I am really excited this week to welcome one of my good friends that I'm fortunate to have met because of touring, and we had the same booking agent for a while, and we have actually done some tours together. This is Ben DeLacour from Nashville, and I was thinking maybe you could introduce yourself for people who maybe haven't heard your music yet. Sure. Uh, yeah, my name is Ben DeLacour. Uh, yeah, you know, I thought that there was a, a dearth of white guys singing sad songs in Nashville, you know, that there weren't enough of those. So I figured that I would end up here. I moved here from New Orleans. Uh, yeah, Galen and I, on the, it's, we've done a handful of tours together and it was wonderful. Yeah, they, I know. I can't wait till someday we'll get to do them again. Uh, you're one of the people that I'm like, I definitely want to do that again. Do you remember that diner that was like all in chrome that had taco? Oh, yeah. It? Yeah, that's and, like uh, one of my favorite tour memories. I don't remember what it's called. It was in upstate New York, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Or Vermont. I think maybe upstate New York. Yeah, you're right. I think it was Vermont. Yeah, that was a great night. It was. Oh, Paul said it was Vermont. He verified. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it was I so, trust him over such a good night. And so touring, it's like busy, 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 show, show, show. But then once in a while, you have these like oasis times, like that one, where you're like, oh, that's one of the reasons I like doing this. I bet you've had, you've been touring a while, right? How many years? Um, well, I mean, I, I've been torn since I was like 20, but I, I guess full time probably for like four years, four or five. This will be five years. Okay. So you're kind of on the same timeline as me. Yeah. Like for full time. Do you have any advice for anyone who wants to get started besides like. <laughs> besides don't do it. Yeah, exactly. I didn't want to say that, but yes, I mean, it's a huge life change you're kind of like a truck driver without driving trucks right you're yeah like, that's what i say it's like you're the worst paid truck driver in the world but at least they don't drug test you <laughs> yeah you know? yeah well so you've been writing you were like a heavy metal dude when you were young right like a little kid or or did that yeah like too? a little yeah it started when i was a little kid my my brother and i were playing in like punk rock and metal bands and stuff from when we were maybe like 12 or 13 years old and um yeah and then probably like about 10 years ago i mean i always i grew up listening to this kind of stuff you know like a lot of folk kind of old rock and roll um not really like country but country-esque kind of stuff like you know townsend's and and that type of stuff and uh it was always like i feel like a transition that i was gonna make yeah you know and i just kind of did it and then, uh, yeah, just can do that. When you started writing, were they in the folk genre right away, or did you actually write like heavy metal music for a while? Oh yeah, I wrote a bunch of like metal music. And okay. Stuff like that. Yeah. Are they really um, different in like lyrics? I know that seems like a dumb question, but really, like how different are uh, the the formats? I mean, there's like definite similarities. I think that one of the things that frustrated me, I think, about playing really loud music because I've always been really into lyrics and, and with that kind of music, like no one listens, nor can they even really hear what you're singing. So it was kind of like, you know, it was nice to, but I definitely wasn't nearly as good at writing lyrics as I thought it was when I was like 22, you know, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to start doing this kind of like folky stuff and i realized that actually my lyrics were pretty terrible so i had to get a lot better at that but you know being up there you know like what we do just up there on our own like you've got to tighten up pretty quick yeah. yeah and so when you're writing songs now do they take you like a while to like get to the final format because for me sometimes they come out almost done and then sometimes like, I really do revise them a lot. Like, like I, I know that you tell really good stories with your songs, which is something that I feel like I don't do. I'm more, metaf like, loose, you know what I mean? And yours sometimes tell, like, 
paint like really vivid pictures of individuals? Do, is that take a while or are these ideas that you've had for like a long time and they kind of spill out when you're ready? I mean, I think all songs are story songs. You know, there's just different ways of telling it. Like, I don't think your songs are any less of a story song than, than mine are. They're just different approaches, you know, to telling yeah, a narrative. Yeah. You know, they're all kind of, um, it, like you, it varies. You know, like I've had songs come out like fully formed and I've had songs that have taken me literally five years of concert writing to finish. Yeah. So kind of, you know. And you released an album called Shadowland. How long ago was that? That was uh, last year? Last summer. So yeah, like on, like coming up on a year ago. Okay. And do you want to play us a song from Shadowland first? Yeah. Is that cool? Awesome. Yeah. I'm going to get out of the screen and mute myself. I'm just going to let my dog outside really quick. I was wondering what that noise was. I was like, yeah, uh, I have a feeling that's either his dog or his really cute daughter, Odette. Um, it could have been either. So. No, luckily it was my my dog. Okay. Yeah. You're like, I got to let Odette outside. Yeah, I just got to. It's okay. <laughs> she's on the loop. You know, it's fine. I got to like that. Yeah, like she, a, she's so cute, but she's got so much energy. It's ridiculous. Is she still energetic as heck? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. she's so wild cute. I can't wait to see her grow up. I'm going to get out of the screen. Okay, I'm out of the screen, and I'm going to mute myself while you play. And oh. have at it. Oh, what is this one? Uh, God's Only Son. Okay, sweet. <laughs> Car in Texas. 
Texas, outside of Eagle Pass. And God spoke to me as I lay there dying in a halo of broken glass. He said, me and the devil, we had us a game to see who would play first. And I'll let you in on a secret while you're down there in the dirt. There ain't no heavenly hosts awaiting beyond that wall of sleep. Is a hungry dog and he always plays for keeps. But if the devil is six and God is seven, I guess that makes me one. I'm gonna claw my way back into heaven. I'm God's only son. that one uh, i mean i'm people were like dang what awesome chord progression love oh. his lyrics his voice is amazing so lots of positive oh, feedback oh. fyi you guys are too kind yeah no no they're not you're really good um so the thing that is cool about you is that you're like hitting it hard pretty often and i'm sure this year is a huge transition is that like is there something that like kept you connected to the music part of your life or did you kind of take a break? Cause I read a really good article. I think you wrote um, in like my pop matters or something about yeah. how capitalism was kind of like, okay, artists go write about the pandemic right now, even though our worlds were like completely rotated yeah. away from our livelihood and, and just like, it was a very stressful time. How did you, was that, something that you kind of carried with you like he kind of made this cool point of like take a rebellious leap and just don't do anything unless you want to right like yeah. don't let yourself feel guilty and i thought that that was actually a really important message uh because i was having a lot of angst like i haven't written a song i still haven't since coronavirus hit which kind of freaks me out but i'm like well you can't just like mass produce songs. You, you have to just write them when they're there to be written. And so I assume it'll yeah. happen again. But what, what kind of led you to write that? And what, how did you deal after? Because that was early. That was like April of 2020. So I'm yeah. curious if you still resonate with that or if you got into a different headspace eventually. I mean, that definitely still resonates with me. I, I, I very much feel the same way about it in terms of, you know, like how... I mean, there's a balance, right? Like we're artists. It's it's the onus is on us to make art, but not make art in terms of just like you know how people are like oh you got to get product out there, you've got to get content. Uh, content. I hate yeah. that word so I mean, much. Dude, it's like yeah, <laughs> content. Yeah. So um, you know, like we all know there's that you know I feel like as an artist you you live and die by your instincts, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't have good instincts as an artist, you're not gonna, you know, and that, that move, you know, that spills over into everything. Like, if you have an instinct with a song, you know, it's working or you can go to all the songwriting courses and seminar in the world, like, you can learn to be a better songwriter, but you can't learn to be a songwriter, right? So because those are instincts, you know, it's like, you know, if you're uh, a wild animal in the jungle and you don't have good instincts, you're gonna get eaten up, you know? And like, not to compare songwriting or making art to- Getting eaten by a tiger? No, but you know, I mean, it, it does feel life and death sometimes, yeah. you know? And I think if you don't have those instincts, you're, you're screwed, right? So like, we know when we're like being lazy versus when we're like going through something and needing to process and like, you know, and like a lot of us are sensitive people. Like, uh, so for me, it's like, I was just like, once I took the pressure off myself, I haven't written a whole lot during the, I've written a few songs. I've been scheming for making the new record, but I've read like 25 books. 
Yeah. That's what I wanted to do. You know, like it was like, you know, I definitely did my share of playing video games with my roommate or, or just like watching trash movies. But like, you know, I kind of had that feeling and I was like, okay, time to, you know, put something in, you know, but, but I think that's different for everybody. And I think that, yeah, like we're, you know, it could, I think, I don't know. I think 2020 allowed me to define myself in more ways than just being an artist, you know, mm -hmm. cause like, no matter how important art is to you, that can't be the be all and end all. That can't be your sole definition of self, you know? And like yeah. part of what that, like I actually ended up in a mental hospital twice in 2020 and like, yeah. Um, that was actually, I mean, it was not fun, but it was good for kind of like, it helped me with a lot of things and come to terms with stuff. And like, you know, it allowed me to start, you know, you're always scared, like, oh, I don't define myself and everything in my life in relation to my art. I'm not taking my art seriously. I'm, I'm you know, and then you have like a kind of existential crisis, but in reality, like, it's healthy to define yourself in other ways or, or maybe healthy not to even define yourself at all so much to just be, yeah. I'm a human being. Art is a big part of my life, but for me, for example, so is being a dad equally. I mean, being a dad is the biggest part of my life and, yeah. and just being a functional human and just being, you know, healthy and like to bear witness to this crazy time we're going through. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I, I'm so glad to hear you say that because it, it is one of those things like, in the same way, so you had some rough times this year, and and I've had different medical things in the past where things go really wrong, and then I'm suddenly like all of the things that I love to do are kind of out of reach for a while. And so it kind of dawned on me that if you define yourself by the things you do, then when you can't do those things, you feel less worthy of just being a human. And so I think you can't be defining yourself or your value ultimately on what you do for sure or produce or like create even because there's actually you have value that goes beyond any level of like quote unquote not just productivity but even just creativity like not everybody at every point in their lives is going to be creating but it doesn't mean we like throw them in a dumpster uh you know what i mean like we have to yeah. embrace people for just being valuable because they're alive and you know like just hang hanging in there or or just doing what they can to enrich themselves and i think like reading 25 books i read a lot this year too and started making crappy watercolor paintings and like just awesome. doing doing things but i was like okay i don't feel like writing but i don't want to just sit here and like let my brain grow i mean it was you know if i didn't focus on something i got really wrapped up in the news you know so i had to think of ways to keep occupied but it didn't have to look like one thing or another. And people who don't make music are obviously just as valuable as people that do. So like, you don't have to define yourself by that as a point of worth. You might want to define yourself as that to say, I believe I'm a musician, so I'm going to keep trying to like work on my craft. Like I get that, you know what I mean? But yeah, then, yeah. interesting. Yeah, so I think you can come to that realization from a lot of different points, you know? And I think it's good when artists admit that because I think did you ever feel pressured I got this a lot at the beginning of the pandemic oh you got so much time have you like made an album yet and I like it stressed me out so bad I don't know if you felt that way at all but that was like I don't even I can't even possibly think about doing that no, right I mean, now. those people can go to hell you know like <laughs> and, and I, you know like it's like they you know like they're entitled to what they think an artist's life is, but you know what? Like, and people love to say, "Oh, well, Shakespeare wrote King Lear." They're like, well, you're talking about Shakespeare, you know? It's yeah. like saying, like, why can't you throw a football a hundred yards? Tom Brady can do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, uh... like it's, it's kind of like, and I think that all feeds into this this toxic loop because, like, as artists. Like we feel like I feel good to be able to say, yeah, this is what I do. Like I travel mm -hmm. around playing the song, like, you know, but, but to get to this point for most of us, we had to like go through a lot of crushing self doubt and isolation because, because, you know, the system that we're in, if you're not making a living doing something, you're somehow seen as like 
a hack or like a part time or like you're living in a fantasy world. So like, it's just like a kind of not to compare it to to trauma. This is kind of something of a stretch as a comparison, but you know, it's like you hold on to that uh, kind of inferiority complex almost. So then you get to the point where you are making a living off it, and then you start to look at people who are working some job that you think sucks and looking at them like they're less than. Yeah, you know, and that's just a manifestation of your insecurity that you're still holding on to. Like in my mind, I'm still that guy, 20 years old, showing up at a bar where no one wants to hear my crappy metal band and just screaming into a mic and getting drunk and like hating everyone and hating myself. You know, that's where I'm still at a lot of the yeah. time. Yeah. So it's important, like what you just said about, you know, um, about uh, realizing that like everyone is valuable and everyone is valuable outside of this what they do for a living or what they do you know like like i think there's intrinsic value in in every, most everybody you know? yeah yeah i agree with you i agree well i'm i'm so glad we get to talk about this because and then we'll talk i have another thing i want to bring up later but let's hear you do another song because obviously cool. that's one of the reasons i want people to hear you play is because i love your music which one do you want to do next I'm going to play your favorite one. I'm going to play the Sam Penny. Can I just preface this one that there are, you know how you hear a song and you're like, oh, that's the soundtrack of my life. Like there are a few songs where you're like, oh, I can listen to this on repeat for like seven hours and it'll be fine. This is one of those songs for me. So I hope you guys like it. Thank you. Yeah, I think this this goes in nicely with what we were just talking about. This this. I'm a face down penny on a broke down bus Too old to roll, too proud to rise Sitting around choking and cursing at the dust Wondering if anything I'll ever look up The thing about being a face down penny Is you can't look back, can't worry about anything Every day looks the same And it's enough to make a poor boy go insane Enough to make a poor boy go insane I'm an old guitar in a white sedan outside a dive bar in Birmingham. Rain's gonna come about 3 a.m. so I can fall asleep and do it all again. The thing about being an old guitar is no one in the world ever cares about where you are. Tibido or Bethlehem are just sitting around waiting in a white sedan. Sitting around waiting in a white sedan. Busted spoke on a little pink bag, lame as a duck and sharp as a knife. Busted spoke on a little pink bag, and I guess I'll be for the rest of my life. The thing about being a busted spoke is even though all of your friends might know you're broke, the wheel still turns the same, and it can all be fixed at the end of the day. It can all be fixed at the end of the day. I'm a face down penny on a broke down bus. Too old to roll, too proud to rise. Sitting around choking and cursing at the dust. Wondering if anything will ever look. Yay. Yeah, I love that one. <clears throat> I have to try not to get choked up. It doesn't work very well. I like it. Good job, Ben. 
Um, that's a song for us, you know? Yeah, that's, I know, it's like the musician's anthem somehow or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, is that what you wrote it about? Was kind of just the life that you are living on the road? I mean, just kind of the, I don't know, I, like, I don't often think, sorry, I'm just going to let my dog in real quick. <laughs> I wonder if we'll get to see this dog. <laughs> Such a good tune. Maybe she'll come up. Oh, What's yeah, her name? William. William? Yeah, she's a girl. You she's can't girl. see, but Hi, William. My, daughter, oh, she... my daughter painted my nails, and she also painted William's nails. <laughs> Cute. Oh, there she is. Hi, Wait. William. Is she a puppy? No, but she's got a lot of puppy energy. She's like eight. Oh, wow. Have you had her the whole time that I've known you? Um, On and off. Okay. Yeah, like kind of split custody of her with my ex-wife. Yeah. Oh, she's cute. I don't think I've met her yet. So, yay. Thank oh, you. Oh, I guess so, not. Yeah. That's, uh, I'll bring have, her next time. We have a bunny, but I can't show you because he eats all the cords of my musical equipment. So, he's sure. passed away every time I do a show. <laughs> He literally, one day he ate two pair of headphones, and then the next day I found out he had cho cho uh, chewed through, what was it, like uh, my interface cord and my microphone cord, and I was like, okay, well, we have to be very vigilant to keep him at bay, so we just put everything like way up high and away, it's so scary. He can, I mean, he, it's like one nick of the tooth too, it's not like a chomping, it's just like, shoop, and he just slices right through, so. That's sharp? Yeah, they're really, I mean, apparently I have not been bitten by him, luckily, but uh, what he does to cords makes me not want to be bitten by yeah. him. So. Yeah, no kidding. Yes. Oh, so That's like, oh, wait, what were you going to say? I was just going to say one day he's going to bite through the wrong cord and just. I know. Well, we have cord protectors on all the ones he can reach. And then oh. when, and so it takes him a while to get close to the cord on those, even though he can chew those still. Um. But it gives us warning, like we can see him, and then we're like, oh, we got to replace that cord protector. It's actually kind of like having a baby that has really sharp teeth. And That's what I was just thinking of. I was like, it's exactly like when Odette yeah. was a little baby, and you just have to yeah, make all these allowances. <laughs> make sure they don't weird. kill themselves yeah. like every yeah. day, <laughs> yeah. 20 times a day. Yeah. Is mm -hmm. she getting past the like suicidal three-year-old phase i mean like yeah so she's yeah i mean she was never we got lucky she's never really been um i think because like we covered up all the outlets and then when she got into the drawing on the wall phase we just got her a bunch of water soluble markers Sorry. and so she did it all over the and i think you know part of it is like she loves drawing and, and painting and stuff but it it's kind of like i think when she realized like I think it's exciting for kids when they like do stuff and they get kind of in trouble, you know, and they want to do it more because like, you know, they, they don't have high executive functioning yet. And it's <laughs> funny, you know, like it's funny to see your parents draw up. So I think like after a month or two of drawing on walls, she was just like, yeah, I'd rather draw on paper again. And then she had, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like smart. not making such a huge deal out of it so that like it becomes an epic battle. Yeah. Yeah. So far, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of those going to be down the line, but, you know, I try to be very like, um, you know, I don't get mad if she knocks things over and it's nice. She has a nice, she goes, that was just an accident. Accidents happen. And I'm like, yeah, accidents <laughs> happen, man. It's cool. You yeah. Know? No, she is so cute. Oh my gosh. Someday people will have to see. She'll probably do some pretty cool stuff and either way, she'll be a fun human to hang out with eventually. I yeah. can't wait to y'all hang out again. I know. We went to Nashville, uh, like, I don't know, not long before coronavirus, right? On the way home from... Yeah, it wasn't long at all. It was, like, did... right before I went to Australia. Yeah, we did a show together, and uh, and then the next day we went out to this diner with Odette and Ben, and they made these poached egg avocado hot sauce freaking toast things that we replicate now at home and we always think about you when we eat them because oh, had no we thing. not gone to that coffee shop my favorite breakfast would never have been discovered and Odette was just so cute she was really fun so yeah. so yeah. what else oh there was one other thing I was going to ask you so work doesn't always look like work I thought that was a great quote in that article that you wrote um, oh, yeah. have you ever looked back and been like dang this part of my life 
it, without this part that totally felt unrelated to art, I would not have written like all of these songs because I have that experience sometimes. I mean, there's some songs that definitely come from a very specific moment, but I think it's kind of by and large an accumulation of things. Yeah. Yeah. In, in the sense of like, yeah, there'll be like lines you'll overhear at a bar or like someone just talking somewhere or you'll read in a book and it'll kind of like, you know, for me, like every time I hear a cool line or read something or think something, I'll write it down on my phone. And so I have, you know, like thousands of, I'm sure you do something similar, thousands yeah. of like little lines that kind of spur different things if I feel stuck in a song or, but uh, I think it's kind of like, goes back to what we were talking about before about just living your life in an artistic way. You know, yeah. if you, it doesn't mean that everything, you know, and I used to, when I was a dumb kid, think that that meant like making as much of a wreck as possible out of my life, you know, for yeah. good stories. And, you know, I mean, I think that's a passage to go through for some people, but I, I don't think it's, it's like people read Charles Bukowski or, you know, hear stories about people like Towns Van Zandt and they think they can go straight to the genius part by like ruining their lives. When in reality, the reason those people were so great was because they had, and they did so much reading and writing and, and thinking about art. You know, if you, you know, someone even like Charles Bukowski, who, you know, I, I know people have mixed feelings about, but if you read him talking about like, Turgenev and Dostoevsky and all those. He's read everything by those. Flaubert, like, you know, that guy has like an encyclopedic knowledge of like classic literature and, yeah. and the same with people like, you know, Townsend and, and, you know, so people think that they can just take a shortcut by becoming a raging degenerate. And then that's not going to, that's not what made those people great, you know? And, and so I think it's a lot, it's important to live your life in an artistic way in, in the sense that because worst case scenario is you might not make great art but you'll 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 have a life that is enriched by by knowledge and appreciation of things that, that i think are important you know for me yes i totally agree we i had this discussion with jeff tweedy back in january um because he was on the show of wilco <clears throat> and he said it's awesome he said there are very few people that he believes like ruining your life actually was responsible for that. He said most people, it's despite those decisions, and and that you and he wants to see the music industry promote kind of like it's okay to have like a healthy, balanced life and be a musician. <laughs> like you can do those things, or like it's okay to try to take care of your mental health and be a musician. Like it's okay to do those things because it doesn't make you less creative. And I I totally agree, and I think that like for the next generation for kids like Odette, like it's good to hear other artists say that. And especially if they've been through, like, you know, he's been through um, treatment and stuff and mental health issues. And I have had mental health issues. I don't like necessarily talk about them all the time, but I've definitely had depression and anxiety and counseling and medication and all those things. But you, the goal for me is definitely enriching life. Not like, like that is the way I plan to become a famous YouTuber, you know what I mean? Like, I want to have a whole complete life, right? And I think that message is pretty cool for younger kids to hear. Like, a 13-year-old listening to stuff, assuming that this is the path that I have to take, it's like, wait a minute, there's another way. You know what I mean? Yeah. I remember yeah. 13 years old, I was like, I can't wait to do heroin and get drunk all the <laughs> time. You know, and it's like, that's that's not it, dude. And, you know, like, it's... it's um you know, yeah, I know, like, Jeff Tweedy is sober, and, you know, I've, I've been sober for some time now. I mean, I was supposed to go out with you and play guitar yeah. on that tour, and I had to go to rehab and said, and, you know, but I'm super grateful for it. Yeah, and I think it's important, you know, I think it's, it's, you know, yeah, like what he said and what you just said, it's, it's more like those people were able to have that creative output despite debilitating addiction and mental health issues as opposed to because of them. You know, yeah. and I do think kind of like there is hand in hand, you know, and people manifest in different ways, but in terms of it's almost like the byproduct of a creative mind can be mental illness or, or severe kind of 
social anxiety or, or oh, yeah. difficulty relating to people or difficulty getting along with life. But that doesn't mean that you just you're you're cursed to um, to live that out forever. There are, you know, there are ways that that, that you can mitigate those issues. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's like for me, anxiety is probably always going to be in the background, like for me. But I guess what I'm saying is it's not like you can't have those things and still be a happy, successful person. It's that that you don't have to necessarily think that because I have these things, I'm effed up and I'm never going to. I might as well just do heroin. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's I might like as well many just other options. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there are yeah. other options. And, and, you know, like, and I know that maybe there are people out here listening who are, who are having a hard time. And I know that, like, it's cliche when people say, like, it does get better. You can get, because I always thought, like, God, shut up. Like, when I heard people talk about <laughs> it, like, no, they don't know real pain and sorrow. I know real pain and sorrow. Like, these people, maybe it was okay for them. But for me, I'm, this is my path. It's, yep. But I would just lie to my, you know, that would just, your brain lies to you because, like, the truth is that, you know, there is a lot of light, you know, but it's hard to find it sometimes. Yeah. But it doesn't mean it's not there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's true, though. Oh, I'm so glad you're on this show. Um, me too. Yeah, and it's so nice to see you. I cannot wait till... It won't be too long. I have one vaccine in, working on even the second. We'll be, we'll be out again. In, and yeah. I, I'm still going to do these shows. I think people who have been on more than once know that. I'm still going to do these weekly shows because I just love these conversations with artists and hearing new music every week is super fun. But I do. I look forward to actually seeing you face to face, which it's is going to be awesome. Well, It'll let's have you, it will. <laughs> let's have you do your last song just because. I want to make sure we get through all of them, if that's okay. What one do you want to do uh, if you have a third one? Uh, yeah, I think I'll, I, I was going to do the Amazing Grace one, but I think I'm going to do the title track off the, um, the, off new, the new record. Okay, yeah. let me get out of here. It's available on Bandcamp and Spotify, right? Yeah, it's Bandcamp. Shadowland. Uh, and you can go on bendelacore.com. It's up there, and you can buy it from various places. I'm 
it's coming down the wire. We follow his instructions the best we know and can. But we're just strangers in the shadow. It's an empty world, and it's getting emptier every day. The more I talk, the less I have to say. What a pretty song. Love it. Oh, yay, Ben. This is so awesome. I'm really grateful to get to hang out with you. And people really, really appreciated the conversation. Um, they're like, we need more examples of this kind of talking from artists, like just kind of discussing the reality of what it is to be an artist, right? And uh, honestly, and so thank you. Um, people can find you online. You'll be going back on the road eventually, I assume. Is that what you plan? Uh, yeah, like I'm, I'm I've been talking uh, my agent and kind of tentatively, like maybe do some, maybe like late summer, depending on you know the outdoor stuff, depending what's happening with festivals and you yeah. know. I mean, I get my second shot on Tuesday, but obviously, I don't want. Um, to be playing anywhere that puts other people at risk. Yeah, that's the biggest. I mean, that's like really what it is for me. It's like, well, I feel like once everybody's had a chance to get their shots and and they the ones who want it, which is a lot of people that still can't get them, once everybody's able to get them if they want them, like then I'll think about going back out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I want people to feel safe and not have to choose between me and safety. But I, I know outdoor, it's like, well, Outdoor might be by the end of the summer. I could see people doing some of those if it's not going through the roof or whatever. But yeah, I know that a lot of festivals are kind of tentatively planning to go ahead. You know, like um, the ones like in fall and stuff. You know, so you'll be back then. Yeah, yeah. And then Adette's gonna learn some tunes. Join the band. She well, she loves singing and like. She, I've been teaching myself piano, so she messed around on piano with me, but she hates me singing. What? Like the minute I'll start singing or playing guitar, she's like, no, no, daddy, stop it, stop it. She's going to like grab my guitar and pull it away from me. It's oh my like, gosh. Oh, well, crap. you're going to have to work on that if she's going to be in a band with you someday. Cause yeah, that's... a lot of music people, people yelling at me to stop playing when I start. So, you know, <laughs> oh, whatever. oh, whatever. Well, I'm very glad to hang out. Um, I'm going to get ready for my couple songs I'm going to do, but I highly encourage you to go on the YouTube and check out the, the comments because they'll be gone after the show for about a day. Yeah, and then I'm going to come in. I'm going to leave this and come in the oh. front and listen to you. Well, we love you, Paul and I both a lot. So can't too. wait to see you soon. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. Bye. Cool. Excellent. I'm so glad that this worked out. I'm going to get myself set up here. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Let me put this away. Okie doke. Hi, everyone. Um, getting set up. Here, how's this? Maybe over that way, just a hair. Uh, well, actually, I was wrong. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much to Ben De Lacour. I just think he's so great. Um, and I knew that this was going to be a fun conversation. I'm really glad we got to hear those three awesome songs. But literally, all of his songs are just so good. So please look him up. Um, any tips that you can donate today are going to be split with Ben. So if you enjoyed his music, uh, feel free to tip. Obviously, check out his website. Um, and before I play, um, as always, I just want to say that this song is, or this show is made possible through a couple of sponsorships. One of them is Sweetwater um, Music, Sweetwater Sound. They do uh, music equipment sales and tech sales, and they're 
really, really helpful. They know a lot about their equipment. So um, check them out at the link in the video description. And also Sean Anderson is a patron who is donating at the Shooting Star sponsor level. And so she is also a big part of making this happen. Um, in case you didn't notice, all the shows are closed captioned. And I like to make sure all the artists get paid. So um, things like sponsorships are helping me make this show possible. And I'll be back next week with um, a different ar artist, a photographer named Matt Williams from Halifax, Nova Scotia. So I'm going to play for you a song called This Hunger Won't Leave. I wrote this one about, like, you know, the bad habits that we have, that the, thi the things that we view as shortcomings, how it's hard to get over them or feeling kind of trapped by your own shortcomings. So here we go. And dreams of restraint But stumbling blocks seem to litter the way And by nightfall I'm broken And swallowed again I want to reach higher than familiar planes But my habits are shackles They drag me away isn't there more to this world than my pain? The horizon, it glitters, but it's too hard to say. Can't you travel on up your mountain? Can't you travel on up your mountain? Can't you travel on up your mountain? No, this lesson won't leave. All I desire is spiritual weight to better the world and to alter my fate. But all I'm consuming, my ego rejects, and I'm trapped in a maze, just retracing my. Can't you get it out of your system? Can't you get it out of your system? Can't you get it out of your system? No, this hunger won't leave. Everybody's coming at it tense. It's plain to see, has it always been so hard to be a human? Everybody's sitting on the fence, 
including me. Do we run away or turn to face our demons? Can't you just admit that it's over? Can't you just admit that it's over? Can't you just admit that it's over? No, this vision won't be. The surface doesn't seem to make much sense. A clouded mess, but beneath it all I know there is some order. Sifting through my fears, my hate, my love, my emptiness. I will someday hit upon that boundless border. Won't you put your lips to this water? Won't you put your lips to this water? Won't you put your lips to this water and quench your thirst to be free? Won't you grab a hold of this hammer? Won't you grab a hold of this hammer? Won't you grab a hold of this hammer and build a new day with me? There you go. Um, that is This Hunger Won't Leave. Um, that's my most recent song. I wrote it right before quarantine started. As I said, um, I'm hoping to get back into writing some new stuff in the next few months here, but I'm working on the book primarily right now. Um, and in case you didn't know, I'm writing a book, so it is a big project, and so that's what the main focus is. Um, but I really... Um, I, I've gotten a lot of inspiration out of reading, recently I'm reading Jeff Tweedy's book on how to write one song. Even though I've written lots of songs, I thought it's always good to hear someone else's take. And he just kind of says, do it, make yourself just sit down and write for like 10 minutes a day. You don't have to like it. <clears throat> you don't have to share it with anyone, but that's one way of just kind of getting it out there. And so if you haven't read his book, it's a fun read and kind of an inspiring manifesto about songwriting. So I'm going to end on one more song for you. Um, this is called Bound by a Thread, and it is kind of about reincarnation and or um, just the interconnectedness of all life. So here we go. Had to reset the pedal. Okay, here we go. could have stayed, but you came here instead to fill my life's empty pages.
be lifetimes ahead If only love would be our Bound, bound, bound by a thread Going down, down through the ages You could have stayed, but you came here instead To fill my life's empty pain Maybe lifetimes ahead If only love would be our guide Our guide Our guide Our guide Our guide If only Guide. There you go. Um, that is bound by a thread. Um, I am going to have to let you go today for now because we're running a little over. Um, but I am really happy that you were here to join me, that you got to tune in on the discussion with Ben DeLaCour and hear his beautiful songs. And I will be back next week and every week at the same time. So Sunday, 2 o'clock Central, noon Pacific, 3 o'clock Eastern. And uh, next week, it'll be 8 o'clock in the UK. There's a time change um, in the UK. So please come um, join me again. I really uh, love talking to artists. I'm going to be talking to Matt Williams about his photography and about his photo book and about writing for magazines like Vice and um, lots of other ones he's written music articles. So I think it'll be a fun chat. Thank you, Ben. Thanks to all of you. See you.